Good morning, everyone. Today we will have a lecture about physiology of blood. We are going to discuss the structure and the function of the red blood cells, white blood cells, platelets. Also, we are going to stop on the uh, function and physiology of the blood plasma. We will discuss the plasma um, proteins. So let us start. Gen uh, wait a minute. Okay, function of the blood. What are the main function of the blood? It's a respiratory function. Mainly for the respiratory, respiratory function are responsible red blood cells, which deliver oxygen and cartel B tissues and carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide from the tissues to the lungs, which further are going to excrete. Trophic function, which is responsible for delivering of the nutrition um, to the uh, tissues and other cells. Excretory functions is delivered to the waste products to the excretory organs, like it could be example for the kidney, for instance, or to some extent liver. Thermoregulation, protective function, which is uh, which mainly will be done by the white blood cells and integrative and regulatory function, uh, which is responsible for transport of the hormones, uh, which further are going to act on the target cells. What is the uh, total blood volume? It's about six, eight uh, percentages. Uh, six, eight percentages of the total blood volume will be called normal, normal volumia. How we are going to count the percentages of the blood in the human's body? So patient's weight, for example, is 50 kilograms. 50 kilograms. So blood volume will be uh, 50 divided on 60, uh, I'm sorry, 50 multiply on 6 percentages and divide on 100. So generally will be about 3 uh, liters of the blood volume. Uh, or we could make the same kind of mass uh, uh, formula, but we will multiply it on the eight percentages. Then, uh, if the blood volume will be less than six percentages, we will call such condition like a hypovolemia. Hypovolemia mainly will happen during the dehydration or when the level of the blood volume will be more than eight percentages. This is a condition we are going to call like hypervolemia, which mainly common or happen in case of excessive injections of the liquids. Uh, let us go on. Of what consists uh, blood, the composition of the blood? Blood consists, the whole blood consists, it's about 55 percentages will be plasma, then and 45 percentages of the form elements. Uh, plasma mainly will consist of the 92 percentages of water, 7 percentages of the proteins, so the proteins will be uh, will related albumins, globulins, fibrinogen, cotrombin. Um, uh, one percentage is, uh, which will go to the other solutes like ions, nutrition, gases, regulatory substances. Form elements consist of the platelets, leukocytes, and red blood cells. Um, red blood cells, the percentages of the red blood cells in the blood is called hematocrit. So percentages of red blood cells in the total blood volume. Normal value of the hematocrit for female it's about from 37 to 47 percentages. For male is it from 42 to 52 percentages. This hematocrit could change. For example, it could decrease. Uh, mainly this situation will happen in case of anemia. You could see that the total blood um, total volume of plasma will stay stable, it will not change, but at the same time the level of the uh, red blood cells are, um, is going to decrease. A polycytemia is a situation during which we are going to have increased level of the red blood cells, so increased level of hematocrit. In this situation the, uh, the ratio of uh, plasma to uh, RBC will change, small amount of plasma and a huge amount of the red blood cells. Now let us in a detail discuss uh, about the hematocrit. So hematocrit, as we discuss, as we know, that percentages of the red blood cells is the total blood volume. Normocytemia, it's a normal range of the hematocrit, which discussed we previously, it's about from 37 to 42 percentages for female or from 42 to 52 percentages for males. But 
in the life, there could be situation during which this hematocrit could decrease, and as a result, decrease level of red blood cells, which will cause oligocytemia. This situation happened in in the clinically it will happen in case if the patient will have anemia so this could be different kind of anemia or iron deficiency anemia due to the lack of nutrition uh, mainly meat which will um, uh, which person it or due to this some kind of bleeding or oh, and another situation is a polycytemia situation during which we will have increased level of the hematocrit this situation could happen in such clinical cases Dehydration. Uh, during the dehydration, example of the dehydration could be oval meeting or um, diarrhea. A uh, person during oval meeting or diarrhea will lose water. Previously, we discussed that the blood, mainly plasma, comes in 92 percentages of plasma. It is water, so the water will be will uh, weigh, uh, will. Uh, the person will lose water and it will lead to the situation of the dehydration. In this way, uh, the plasma volume will become smaller and as a result, the level of the red blood cells is going to increase. The ratio will change to increase level of the RBC. High altitudes, if person live for constantly during the whole life in a um, uh, high altitude, so as a result, the level of R RBC will increase. This, to some extent, is a compensa uh, compensatory reaction of the body to the um, high altitudes because in this way, red blood, huge amount of the red blood cells uh, will be responsible to catch more oxygen from the air, uh, to, catch more, uh, to catch more oxygen and deliver to the tissue. In the high altitudes, we know that there is a less uh, percentages of oxygen in the air. So that is why the body will try to compensate this situation with increased level of the RBC. Or if uh, the patient will uh, lay in, will be will in the clinic, and after some kind of surgery operation or some kind of circumstance, clinical, there is a different situation. Here requires transfusion of the blood, mainly transfusion of the RBC. So in this situation, not the whole blood, but generally the RBC. So in this situation, uh, the level of the RBC will increase and the level of uh, blood plasma will become smaller. So now let's repeat once more of what consists this uh, blood plasma, 91, 92 percentages of water. So you see it's mainly consists blood from water. Seven percentages of 61, 66 to 87 gram per liter percentages of proteins. Proteins will divide it on the albumins, globulins, and fibrinogen. Their function we are going to discuss a little bit later. And two percentages of the slowed substances like electrolytes, carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and hormones which will transport by the same albumins um, in, the uh, in the blood. Now let us um, dig deeply in the case of the blood. We are going to discuss um, why it's important to know about the composition of the blood plasma and why it's important to know about the function of the uh, proteins. Um, this part of the lecture will be called everything is connected. So now remember that liver, albumin, and appearing such condition like edema, they are connected. So in a, a little bit later, we are going to discuss how liver is connected to the albumins and how liver with albumins will be responsible for appearing of edema. So this is a very important situation in the clinic and you like a future doctors, you should know and remember about this. Another part which we, what we're going to discuss, it's about liver globulins and transport, transport of um, iron, transport of proteins, how this uh, circle is also uh, very, uh, how knowing about this circle is also very important to, to know how liver, uh, connected with the globulins and how this connection will be responsible for the transports of the iron and for the transport of the uh, lipids. Okay, so let if you remember, uh, we talked the first hour circum, it was about the liver, albumin, and edema. 
So how liver and albumin will be responsible for appearing of edema? Liver uh, albumin is this type of proteins which produced in the liver. So the organ which will be responsible for them, it will be albumin. So we could think that if person have some kind of problems with the liver, some kind of chronic uh, hepatitis or cirrhosis, I don't know, it's like very severe condition of this, this kind of diseases. So, and as a result, the hepatocytes will not be able to produce albumin. So logically, the level of albumin will decrease. So this way, if we will have problems with the site of production, we, as a result, you will receive decreased level of this albumin. Um, albumin, as the level of the albumin in the blood, it's about from 35 to 42 gram per liter or 40 for 60 percentages. The main function of the albumin is responsible of oncotic pressure. Oncotic pressure, it is a part of the main osmotic pressure in the blood and is responsible for, meat, for transport um, or it's responsible, not the transport, it's responsible mainly for movement of fluid between the blood vessels and the tissue. Albumin are responsible, albumin catch uh, around themselves uh, water. So in this way, water will be in such kind of stable condition and it will uh, transport not, um, and it will mainly transport uh, by, with the albumin. So if the level of albumin will decrease in the blood vessels, so as a result, this water will not be surrounded by around the albumin, so water will become free. And as a result, water will move from the blood vessels to the tissue. In a tissue, it will stay, and as a result, we are going to receive edema. Mainly, this edema will appear in the legs. So that in this way, we explain the main circle of um, the first circle, which we discussed previously. It's liver, albumin, and edema. Problems in the, in the liver, like cirrhosis or some kind of chronic hepatitis, could lead to decreased production of the albumin, less amount of albumin in the blood, will lead move uh, will the less amount of albumin in the blood will lead to the condition of edema because water will become free and it will move from the vessels to the tissue you could see here like a uh, white one it's an albumin and you see that around that um, albumin are surrounded by water it's by such kind of blue walls this picture yes so, uh, and sodium ions also be attentive. Uh, mostly sodium is related to the water. So it's such kind of chain of events. But mainly now we are going to stop on the water. So this uh, uh, albumin is surrounded by the water. When we have less amount of uh, albumin, so this water will become free and you could see it will move outside from the blood vessels and will receive situation of edema. Clinical situation which you could find in a, in, in a patient. So one case or one situation during which edema could happen, it's a decreased level of albumin in the blood. And why is there decreased? You like a doctor, doctor should... Uh, discuss maybe it's problem with the liver or some kind of other problems also it's not only one it's not one of the main function of the of the uh, albumin to maintain on aquatic pressure besides besides this they absorb and carry out uh, bilirubin uh, they're responsible for deliver for transporting of steroids steroid hormones and some kind of drugs let us move on. Function of the globulins. Globulins will be divided in the three type, subtypes. It's alpha globulin, beta globulins, and gamma globulins. As the percentage of globulins is from 35 to 38 percentages in the blood, it's a general percentage. And from 20 to 35 per percent, uh, gram per, or 20 to 35 gram per liter of the globulins. Alpha globulin. So what are the main function of them? They're responsible for transport of glucose. Uh, to the tissues. Uh, they will transport the glucose in a such structure which is going to call glycoproteins. Also, alpha globulins are responsible for transport of the, of the iron to the uh, uh, liver, to the red bone marrow. 
uh, they're responsible for transporting of fertility enzymes like prothrombin or angiotensinogen. So generally, if uh, um, Beta globulins, uh, they transport about 75 percentages of the lipids. So in this case uh, of the lipids uh, to the uh, tissue, to the liver, so in this case, they were responsible for the lipid metabolism. And transferrin, which mainly responsible for transferring, transport all the iron from the, um, I'm sorry, iron to the uh, red bone marrow, well, it will be used for producing of the red blood cells. Okay, so gamma globulins. The main function of the gamma globulins is responsible for immunity. Immunity is a, uh, to protect the body from the viruses, from the bacteria, and origin, mainly they origin in the plasma cells. Okay, let us move on. Function of the fibrinogen. Fibrinogen which is it's also one of the proteins which are produced in the liver. So also, um, well, there's, when there is a problem with the liver, so everything is connecting or everything will go from the liver. When we have problems with the liver, we will have problems with production of the albumin, so which will lead to the edema. We will have problems with production of the globulins, which could lead to the problems with uh, a transport of the nutrition, the glucose to the tissues, or transport of the lipids to the tissues, or transport to, to, of the iron to the red bone. Marrow. So in these cases, it also will have problems with the transport. But besides this, uh, liver have also indirectly will affect on the hemostasis. Why? Because the liver produces fibrinogen. Fibrinogen is uh, uh, this, this protein which uh, the main function of what is blood clotting. It will respond. It will responsible to make such specific network. Um, near the damaged uh, blood vessel, uh, to which will uh, this network is going to catch red blood cells, uh, <clears throat> white blood cells to the area which was damaged. And as a result, it will close it. So in case when, if there will be problems with production of fibrinogen, the level of the fibrinogen will decrease, we could predict that the person could have problems with the blood clotting. So, um, I don't mean that, they, that it will be bleeding, which will be difficult to stop, but uh, you could see in the skin a specific... Uh, for example, some kind of bruise after the uh, some tissue damage in this situation. Okay, let us go on. Plasma lipids. So in this case, let us, so we discuss that for lipid metabolism, about 75 percentage of lipids will deliver by the uh, beta globulins. So let us discuss about this plasma lipids. Uh, lipids, generally, uh, will, we have very low density lipids, which uh, will deliver by the beta globulins. And this type of lipids will turn to the low density lipids. And will deliver in and this and which delivers cholesterol to the cells. C cells cholesterol is going to use for me for producing all the membranes and for, the, for its metabolism products. As a result, cells is going to excess uh, remove high density lipids uh, and excess cholesterol, which further will return back uh, to the liver. In liver. Uh, these high density lipids will convert it to the bile cells, and uh, which is a part of the bile in the uh, digestive system. Generally, um, main function of these beta globulins is generally to deliver this very low density and low density lipids to the uh, to these cells. Uh, very low density and low density uh, lipids—they are example of the uh, good lipids. 
which liver to the T, which liver to the cells. High density lipids, they to some extent are bad lipids only in case if there will be enormous big amount of them, which they will have will be in excess amount, and as a result, they could. Uh, um, connect to the blood vessels, and as a result, could appear such condition which is called uh, atherosclerosis. Okay. Let us repeat once more. I'm sorry, I did a little bit mistake about good and bad lipids. Uh, good lipids, it's uh, lipids of high density lipids which deliver to the liver. Uh, bad lipids, it will be low density or very low density lipids. When these two types of lipids will deliver by the beta globulins, so in this, and, in the, and as a result, they will be in a normal value. So in this case, they will not have harmful effect on your body. But in case, if there will be problems with production of the beta globulins, or they will be excess amount of the very low um, density lipids or low density lipids, they could have a harmful effect on your body, generally on the blood vessels, and they were responsible of appearing atherosclerosis. So I'm sorry, I have a mismatch. Very low density and low density lipids, they are bad lipids, which are responsible for atherosclerosis. High density lipids, to some extent, they are good lipids. But remember that they will be bad lipids only in case if they, their value will be more than normal value, which is, present, which is, which is uh, presented in the lab analysis. So now let us move on. Physically chemical properties of uh, blood and plasma. So, first of all, we are going to discuss or repeat once more about the osmotic and oncotic pressure. Osmotic pressure is created by the sumptuous substances disloaded in it, and its value is determined by the concentration of the disloaded molecules. It's mainly by the electrolytes. Provided moment uh, of um, solve it from the solution with a low concentration to the solution to the, with a high concentration on disposed substances. The normal value of the osmotic pressure is from 280 to 300 millismol per liter. Oncotic pressure, so if osmotic pressure is mainly will be done by the electrolytes, oncotic pressure will be done by the albumin, which we discussed previously. As it is a part of the osmotic one, also it's mainly responsible for redistribution of water between blood and tissue. Uh, its value is 25, not 3, 25 to 30 millimeters per mercury. The 3 is a mistake, I'm sorry. Um, so now as, a, as osmotic, as in cotton press, generally they together are responsible for uh, redistribution of water and electrolytes in between the blood and the tissues. Now let us discuss different kinds of solutions and how water is going to move. Uh, the example of the different kind of solution will be blood plasma, which you, you have this osmotic and oncotic pressure. And in this case, uh, and how water is going to move, uh, movement of water will be done between the blood plasma and the red blood cells. So there's three types of solution. Isotonic solution, which is present in our blood. Also, isotonic solution have, other, have uh, um, another solutions which we use in a clinic. It's uh, 0.9 percentages of sodium fluoride and 5 percentages of glucose. Also, there is a hyper, uh, hypertonic solution when the percentages of sodium chloride will be more than 0.9 and hypotonic solution when the percentages of sodium chloride will be less than 0.9 solution. So in case of the hypertonic solution, it means that we will have more sodium chloride in, in isotonic solution. The level of sodium chloride in your case, let us discuss, will be equal as in the uh, plasma as in the RBC. So generally water will move, will happen, but not, but it will not have any kind of harmful effect on the structure of the red blood cells. Uh, 
In case of the hypertonic solution, uh, the level of sodium chlorine will be higher in the plasma. So in this case, we will talk that osmotic pressure will be higher in the plasma. So as a result, water is going to move from the lower concentration to the higher concentration. So low concentration of sodium chlorine will be present in the RBC. And so as a result, water will move from the red blood cells to the plasma and the RBC will shrink, become smaller. If there will be another situation, for example, when the solution is going to be a hypotonic, it means the level of sodium chlorine will be less than 0.9 percentages or osmotic pressure will be less than 280 milliosmol. So water is going to move from the lower concentration to the higher concentration. Now high concentration of the sodium chlorine will be present in the RBC. So water will move to the RBC and RBC will become big in the size. And as a result, after that, they are going to destroy. Uh, so in case of the hypertonic solution, we should mention about the minimal osmotic resistance and maximal osmotic resistance. Minimal osmotic resistance is when the solution will be about 0.46 percentages of sodium chlorine. In this condition, RBC will be resistant to the destroying. So yes, they will. Some some of them will be increasing the size, but nevertheless, not all of them will destroy. Maybe some of them, but not not all of them. Um, and. Uh, Maximal osmotic resistance, it's about 0.33 percentages during which mainly the whole RBC are going to be destroyed. So generally, uh, biggest amount of them will be destroyed. So it means when the solution will have, um, when the solution will have 0.33 percentages of sodium chloride. Okay, let us move on to the another uh, physical properties of the blood, which is called blood viscosity. What is the blood viscosity? It's ability to resist to the flow of the fluid. Practical moving related to one to another. The blood viscosity is from 3.5 to 5.5 units. It is value. It increases during the dehydration when the level of plasma will become smaller. The level of RBC relatively will become higher. And ability of there to um, and ability to ability of them to connect and uh, to resist the flow of the fluid will be smaller. And also, uh, but blood viscosity will decrease during the anemia. So, for example, this is example of the uh, anemia when the blood viscosity will be low we have small amount of the rbc so they will uh, without any kind of problem uh, without any kind of problem move in the blood vessels and they will be responsible to resist to the uh, fluid movement in case of the high viscosity which present here when we'll have small amount of the plasma for, uh, plasma and it's result water so generally uh, we will have huge amount of the relatively have huge amount of the rbc this will lead to such condition that the rbc could not resist to the flow of fluid and they will connect and to some extent destroy in this situation so <clears throat> okay. Now let us move on to the red blood cells. Characteristic of the red blood cells. The normal value of red blood cells for males is from four to five. Of and female for three point seven to five, four point seven multiplied on ten in twelve times. Uh, they are flexible, big concave, and un unnucleated, so they are without nucleus. Uh, in their structure, there is a present two 3D phosphoglycerat, which is responsible to change the affinity of red blood cells to the of hemoglobin, I'm sorry, to the oxygen. 
Also in their structure are present carbonic anhydrides, which is responsible for catalyzing uh, formation of carbonic acid from CO2 and water. In the picture, you could have the normal red blood cells, which is a big concave, which is a flexible, and the, uh, another kind of red blood cells, which is common, um, which happen in the case of the sickle cell anemia, uh, when the red blood cell have another kind of shape, and as a result, they will not able for maintaining their function with transport of oxygen and carbon dioxide. Inside of the red blood cells are present hemoglobin. The normal value of hemoglobin is about for males 130 to 160 and for females 120 to 150. What is the structure of the globulins, uh, hemoglobin? Uh, hemoglobin consists of the globin. It's a protein, two chains of alpha global globulins and two chains of beta globulins. Such kind of structure mainly will have type A hemoglobin, which is common for adults. In um, fetus, uh, it present another kind of hemoglobin, which consists with two chains of, of alpha and two chains of gamma globulins. But after the birthing, the structure of the red blood cells will convert to the type A with two change of alpha and beta globulins. Besides this, it consists of four subunits of DHEM. This DHEM mainly responsible to, if here is present, such four subunits, subunits, subunits of DHEM, to which will um, which also consists of contains iron, and this iron is going to bind with uh, oxygen, which further is going to deliver to the tissues. Hemoglobin function. Um, mainly red blood cells, the main function of them is the respiratory function, is to deliver oxygen to the tissue and transport carbon dioxide to the lungs. Uh, when we talk about this function, we should mention about such thing, which is called oxygen capacity or hemoglobin, which means how many oxygen could deliver the hemoglobin. Maximum, uh, maximum, maximal volume of, oxy of oxygen, which could deliver one gram of hemoglobin. How we can could count it? So 1.35 milli milliliters of oxygen per one uh, uh, gram of hemoglobin. For example, if we have 130 gram per liter of hemoglobin, so oxygen capacity of hemoglobin will be 134 milliliters, it is related to the one gram of hemoglobin. We have one, 130 grams of hemoglobin, so X is that volume of oxygen which who should deliver our value of the hemoglobin. So it will be about 175 milliliters. So we could say that 130 gram per liter of hemoglobin is um, able to deliver 175 milliliters of oxygen. It's oxygen capacity of the hemoglobin. Um, it could decrease if the level of the hemoglobin will decrease. So as a result, the respiratory function of the red blood cells will decrease and which could lead to the hypooxemia, which means decreased level of oxygen in the uh, blood. And further, it will lead to the hypoxemia, decreased level of oxygen into the tissue. What kind of compounds of the hemoglobin we know? It's a oxyhemoglobin connection of the hemoglobin with oxygen. Now, please be attentive. Carbohemoglobin, it's connection of oxygen with carbon dioxide. And carboxyhemoglobin and methemoglobin, it's these substances which are not common in physiology. Mainly they related in, in mainly they will appear in some in the pathophysiology condition. Carboxyhemoglobin, it's connection with hemoglobin with CO, not CO2. This is common when the person will inhale a huge amount of um, gas, um, methane gas, uh, gases uh, from the car. Um, 
met hemoglobin, it's a connection of the hemoglobin with strong oxidants. So nevertheless, carboxyhemoglobin and met hemoglobin will happen due to the poisoning of the gas carbon monoxide or some kind of nitric um, compounds, strong nitric compounds, which will uh, responsible for appearing of the met hemoglobin. And it's repoiasis. So mainly, uh, what's important to know it? Erythropoiasis is happened in the red bone marrow. This process will last from three to five days. It is controlled by the erythropoietin. We discussed about this hormone when we talked in a previous semester. This hormone is produced by the kidney, and the stimuli which will be responsible for production of this hormone will be hypoxia, decreased level and hypoxemia, decreased level of oxygen in the tissue and in the blood. Also, for uh, erythropoiesis, a big role play two vitamins, B12 and B9, uh, because they will play mainly role in maturation of the red blood cells. Deficiency of these vitamins will lead to the um, anemia, which is called megaloblastic anemia or carnitious anemia. Also, what's important to you, about, to, to you to remember now, it's about the reticulocytes. Reticulocytes is the precursors of the red blood cells. They um, and in the blood, their value should be approximately to the one percentages. If the value of the reticulocytes in our blood analysis is going to increase, you could predict and this example of the unmature red blood cells, you could predict that uh, red bone marrow. Uh, that there is some kind of condition which stimulates the red bone marrow to produce a huge amount of the RPC in a short time. For example, bleeding, um, which could lead to increased level of reticulocytes, not only of the RPC in the blood, but also reticulocytes. Why is this happening? It is happening because in the bleeding, you will very quickly and rapidly lose the person. I'm sorry, it's going to very quickly and rapidly lose blood. So to compensate this reaction, bone marrow will try to produce very quickly a huge amount of the RBC. Some of them will be mature red RBC, but some of them will be unmature. And the, this unmature RBC will be presented by the reticulocytes. Now let us discuss about the vitamin B12. As, I told, as we know, B12 and B9 is that vitamin which is responsible for maturation of the RBC. So if these vitamins will not be present in our food supply in a sufficient amount, we could also predict that the person is going to have some kind of anemia. But this anemia will be done not due to the problems with uh, like loss of blood, bleeding, but this anemia will be done due to the problems of malnutrition problems of the food supplement, which means deliver of these vitamins B12 and B9 to the red bone marrow. What happening with the uh, uh, B12 vitamin? B12 vitamin, which uh, will deliver from by the food to the stomach. In the stomach, it will combine with an interesting factor. Uh, this interesting factor is called factor Kessler forming complex that resists digestion in advance to intestinal tract. As a result, it will not, this vitamin will not be indigested. This complex is going to absorb in the terminal ileum um, of the intestine, and as a result, transfer to the liver where it's going to store, and also transfer to the red bone marrow where it's going to use for producing of um, red blood cells. So, um, now, for example, if you have the patient with anemia and you know that the problem is the food supplement, so maybe the person doesn't, this vitamin B12 mainly will present uh, as the <clears throat> so maybe the person is a vegetarian. <clears throat> which means uh, he or she doesn't eat meat because mainly vitamin B12 present in the meat, in the eggs, in the fish. So if the person does not eat meat, fish, fish, eggs, so you could predict that the problem with with, is with the food supplement. But if the person is me, but if person eat meat, eat meat, food, uh, fish, and eggs, so 
what could be the cause of the deficiency of vitamin B12? So let us go uh, down. So if she, he or she eat meat, maybe the problems will be located in the stomach, generally in this fact of Kessler. Patients with the gastroectomy, gastroectomy, it means the, um, when some part of stomach is going to be cut it due to the cancer, for instance. So in case of the gastroectomy, uh, they will have increased the part, decrease, I'm sorry, decreased part of this interesting factor, Kessler, and as a result, they could have problems with absorption of vitamin B12, mainly problems with producing this kind of substances which will not be uh, digested in the gastrointestinal tract. So it's another problem which could happen. Or um, that there is an absence of interesting factor which will not able to make a complex with the vitamin B12 and as a result to protect this vitamin B12 from the absorption in the intestine. Okay. But let us discuss another situation. If person does not have gastroectomy, person is not vegetarian, but he has or she has white um, anemia due to the B12 um, deficiency. The problem could be located in the intestine. You see, we uh, have one situation, anemia, one condition, clinical case or disease, but we, do, we have different causes. And generally, these causes will happen in a different levels. Problems with the food supply, problems with the stomach, or now we discuss problems with the intestine. So maybe in the intestine, in the terminal ileum of the, intest uh, of the intestine, is, there is a present some kind of cancer which does not allow to absorb, the, uh, which does not allow to absorb this vitamin B12 and does not allow it to deliver to the uh, liver or to the red bone marrow. So you see, you have different causes, but you have one condition, uh, one disease, anemia. In our case, due to the deficiency of B12 vitamin, but different causes. That is why. For you as a doctor, it's very important to know the physiology of the red blood cells, the mechanism of um, uh, transport, the mechanism of absorption of these vitamins, to know where to find the problem of the anemia, or in the food, or food, or in the bleeding, or in a, some kind of, or in a gastrointestinal tract, to find the uh, disease which is located in this level, which doesn't allow to uh, absorb this vitamin. So, and now we are going, we will, we will go to more, how about myself, I will put myself here. More complex um, picture, which describe the metabolism of the red blood cells. Red blood cells, the lifespan of them is about 120 days. They will circulate in the blood, but further, they will deliver to the liver where they're going to destroy. So, hemoglobin, uh, red blood cells. So generally, their lifespan is about 120 day, 20 days. Then they deliver to the spleen, and in spleen, they're going to destroy. They will destroy in the globulin fraction, globin fraction, which further will, uh, which will uh, break down to the amino acids and further will be used in the synthesis of the proteins. With the heme group, uh, heme group will be divided to the on the iron. The iron by the transferring will deliver to the liver where this iron is going to store and also it will deliver to the red bone marrow where it's going to be used for this synthesis where it's going to be used for synthesis of the new red blood cells and uh, then um, that iron which uh, does not used for synthesis of the rpc will be will transport by the ferritin uh, will will store in a case of the um, liver and transport by the ferritin to, to the liver. Heme group, uh, another part, uh, will convert uh, will convert it to the bilirubin. 
Bilirubin first is going to convert to the bilirubin, and by the albumins will by the albumins will deliver to the liver. In the liver, this bilirubin will be will, will be will become the part of the bile, and further it will, be, will and bile we know it is a part of the digestive system and take part in the digestion of the lipids. This bile uh, also responsible for making the color of the feces, and in this case, it will be called like stercobilin. And in the ki kidneys, also responsible for making color of the urine, um, due to the presence of the urobilirinogen. This one. So, um, as we talk, <clears throat> So in this case, in the shortly or briefly, is example how the metabolism of the hem of the red blood cells. So let us once more. Red blood cells lifespan 120 days. They break, they break down in the spleen, I'm sorry. After that, uh, globin group, which um, of the red blood cells will, uh, will break down to the amino acids which further will be used for the synthesis of proteins and the same for the synthesis of the same globulin in the red bone marrow. Heme group uh, will um, break down on the iron, which will iron sleep fast, which will deliver to the red, red bone marrow by the transferrin. The uh, excess amount of iron will store in the liver in case by the protein ferritin. Uh, also, him, uh, the him group will convert it to the bilirubin and further to the bilirubin and deliver by the albumins to the liver. In the liver, this bilirubin will become the part of the bile, bile as the part of the digestive system, which is responsible for digestion of the lipids. To some extent, it's called emulgations, but it's to say not digestion, but emulgation of the lipids, which further will be digested by the enzymes of pancreas. But besides this, bile, um, some part of bile will be reabsorbed in the intestine, but another part of bile will um, excrete it uh, in, a con uh, in a conversion, in a condition of the stercobilin by the feces and in conversion uh, and in condition of the urobilin by the uh, in a part of the urine. As a result, they're responsible for making color as a feces and for urine. Okay, let us go on. So lab analysis, for example, normal lab analysis, which you could receive, it's if the female uh, will have, male, I'm sorry, will have the RBC value from four to five and female will have value from 3.7 to 4.7. Male will have the level of hemoglobulin 130, 160 and female 120 and 150. Also, to put the diagnosis of anemia, you should count color index, how you should count it. So the normal value of color index is 0 0.85 to 1.5, 0 0.5. So your level of red blood cells, for example, I'm sorry, level of, of hemoglobin, it's my mistake, I'm sorry. Level of hemoglobin, you should multiply on uh, three and divide on the level of uh, RBC. So exercise, the level of RBC is about 2.6 and the level of hemoglobin is 70. You should count color index. So color index will be 70, level of hemoglobin, multiply on three, and divide on the level of RBC, but without this comma. So it will be not 2.6, it, uh, it will be 260. When you will make this mass, uh, uh, you will receive the result 0 0.8. 0 0.8, it is less than 0 0.85. So we could predict, we could say that the person has anemia, not only due to the decreased level of RBC and hemoglobin, but also due to the decreased level of the color index. 
types of anemia. Uh, anemia could be due to the uh, blood loss, which will be called hemorrhagic anemia. Anemia could be due to the damage of the red blood cells, which will be called hemolytic anemia. Pernicious anemia due to the lack of B12 uh, or B29 vitamins, we discussed now it. Hypoplastic or plastic anemia, mainly it will happen due to the, some kind of cancer in the red bone marrow. Anemia due to the renal insufficiency. This anemia will happen due to the problems with the kidney. For example, people who have chronic kidney disease um, and generally they require the dialysis, some kind of treatment which is responsible to uh, clean to reabsorb, clean the blood and as a result because they could not do it properly and excrete the urine in the sparing excrete waste products mm, uh, kidney responsible we know producing of hormone erythropoietin erythropoietin will stimulate bone marrow to produce uh, rbc but if kidney is not able to produce erythropoietin as a result Nothing will be nothing will stimulate bone marrow to produce RBC. So logically, a person will have anemia due to the problems with stimulation of it, or problems with stimulation of production of RBC. So and due to the lack of erythropoietin. So people with a chronic kidney disease, which have the stage three or four, uh, is they could have problems with production of erythropoietin, and as a result, they you could predict that they could that they will have anemia. Blood type according to the ABO system. So in the uh, red blood cells, we have present of um, proteins. We have present of agglutinogens, and in the plasma here we have present of agglutinins. So in type O uh, blood, we will not, uh, there will not, RBC will not have any kind of agglutinogens, zero. In type A will be present only A agglutinogens, uh, type B only B, and in type AB, two types of agglutinogens, A and B. But what is, what is interesting, what will happen in a plasma? In the plasma, we will have also different kind of agglutinins, for instance, in type O, where we don't have any kind of agglutinogens, will be present two type of agglutinins, type A, uh, anti-A and ITB, or type alpha and beta. Why? Because like this connection of agglutinogens and agglutinins is like key uh, to, mm, to the door. So agglutinogen type A will connect to agglutinin anti-A. So they will connect and make this, and as a result, it will happen agglutination. And as a result, will happen destruction of the RBC. So that is why it's better when uh, in the blood will, will be, uh, when in the blood generally will be present different type of agglutinogens and different type of agglutinins. I mean that the letters will be different. So as in a type O, we have no presence of agglutinogens. So agglutinins, anti-A and anti-B or alpha and beta will not able to connect to this agglutinogens. That is why they will be present in the plasma. In type A, we have A agglutinogen. So in the plasma will be uh, antibody, which will call anti-B. Anti-B will not connect with the agglutinogen A, and as a result, agglutination will not happen, RBC will, <coughs> RBC will not destroy. In type B will be present uh, anti-A agglutinin or, B, uh, or alpha agglutinin, which will not able to connect with the B uh, antigen. And in type AB blood, we know that will be present a and B agglutinogen, but plasma in the plasma will not be present any kind of agglutinins. I mean, even alpha, even beta. So as a result, they will not connect and the reaction of agglutination. Agglutination, it means connection between agglutinins of the plasma or antibodies of the plasma, another name, with um, agglutinogens in the red blood cells. 
will not happen. This connection will not happen, and as a result, RBC will not destroy. Okay. Besides this, uh, we have another uh, factor which is responsible for dividing of the blood group. It will be RH factor. This factor will be done due to the presence of the uh, RH, put see here, RH positive factor and RH negative factor. Mainly, uh, this has happened due to the presence of the D antigen. In Rh positive blood, uh, will be present D antigen. In Rh negative blood, you could see this D antigen will not be present, will, is not common. Uh, so, um, clinical case, which is related to the blood typing and generally to the uh, mainly it's related to the RH differences. It will be called newborn hemolytic disease. Um, this kind of disease happens when the RBC of the fetus is going to destroy. So to, it means that the mother uh, will have RH negative blood. Besides this, the fetus is going to have Rh positive blood. It means that their red blood cells will have this D antigen. So, uh, and as a result, when <clears throat> uh, red blood cells <clears throat> As a result, mother's blood, mother's uh, blood is going to produce like uh, the antibodies to the fetus uh, red blood cells. So as a result, um, fetus red blood cells will destroy. Why? Because mother's uh, RBC, which doesn't have presence of this D antigen, will detect the fetus blood like something. Uh, um, dangerous and as a result immune system is going to produce antibodies which could destroy it so and this situation could lead to the abortion that is why in case of the first pregnancy the newborn hemolytic disease even could not happen but in case of the second pregnancy when the antibodies appear to the uh, rh positive blood of the fetus if uh, fetus they could destroy it and as a result And as a result, this red blood, uh, this antibodies will destroy fetus uh, um, uh, blood, which will lead to the hemolysis. So women with the Rh negative blood will um, uh, they requires to receive the D antigen antibody in the blood, such kind of injection, which will prevent this newborn hemolytic disease. Mm -hmm. White blood cells. The value of the white blood cells is from five to 10 uh, gram per liter. They generally origin in the bone marrow. Thymus and lymphatic nodes are responsible only for maturation of the T and B lymphocytes. The, the average lifetime of the white blood cells is from three to five days. Their main function which is its protection. It's immunity to protect your body against uh, viruses, antigens, and bacteria. White blood cells we divide on the granulocytes and agranulocytes. So to the granulocytes will do, uh, will relate it neutrophils, eosinophils, basophils. To agranulocytes will be related lymphocytes and monocytes. Here, it given the percentage of these um, white blood cells. Mainly, the function of the neutrophil is um, protection your body against the bacterial or the fun, uh, fungal infection. They are mostly common for the first responders of the microbial infection. Eosinophils are responsible for parasitic infection and allergy, for instance, vermids. Basophils mainly are responsible only for the allergy re reaction. Um, Monocytes uh, function phagocytosis of the pathogens, present, uh, representation of antigen to the T lymphocytes, which is a part of the uh, immune, it's also the part of the immune system responsible for the secondary immune response. Neutrophils. 
mainly the main function of the natural foods is phagocytosis. Uh, they will phagocytize mainly its bacteria or different kind of the debris. So in case you know, the situation will happen in acute inflammation, it's um, uh, they will phagocytize in acute inflammatory response, response of the cells, and their number is going to increase in a bacterial infection. Eosinophils, uh, they defend against helminthic uh, uh, infection, different kinds of parasites or vermits. Um, also, what is important, they produce histamine. The cause of uh, causes of eosinophilia it could be paras uh, parasitis, asthma, chronic adrenal insufficiency, some kind of uh, lymphoproliferative disorders, myeloproliferative disorders, allergic reaction, or different kind of neoplasia like Hodg Hodgkin lymphoma. Uh, what is the function of histamine, which is released by the eosinophils? Mainly, this histamine, which uh, like if some kind of antigen will will come to your body, yes, and it will deliver to the blood cell. Eosinophils will responsible. Uh, eosinophils will release this has his histamine, and histamine will increase the responsible for the vasodilatation. And for increasing of vascular permeability of the white blood cells to the area where it is area where this antigen is located. So in this case, a lot of white blood cells will deliver to the um, to this pathologic area. So and try to uh, try, try try to defeat the antigen. Mm. Okay. Basophils and in comparison with the mast cells. Basophils, they mediate allergic reaction. They contain anti heparin and histamine. The main function of heparin is anticoagulation, so, and histamine is vasodilatation. So, histamine will dilate the vessels. Uh, more white blood cells uh, will deliver to the place uh, where, where we have damage or where we have problem, where we have this bacteria or antigen. And heparin will prevent anticoagulation. So, as a result, the blood flow will happen will continuous without any kind of problems. Mast cells, they mediate a local tissue allergy reaction. They originate from the same producer as basophils, but, but they are not the same type of, uh, same type of cells. They are not, mast cells it, are not basophils. Um, they also release the histamine, heparin, eosinophil, and also they were responsible in the hypersensitivity or reaction in appearing of this allergy. Okay, let us go on to the uh, type of lymphocytes. What kind of type of lymphocytes we have? We have B lymphocytes. Uh, <clears throat> We have T helper lymphocytes, uh, <clears throat> T uh, cytotoxic lymphocytes, regulatory and natural killer. Uh, the T um, helper lymphocytes, they are responsible for activation of macrophages. They activate in other T's and B cells. In, mainly this happens in case of inflammation. So toxic uh, lymphocytes, they are responsible for elimination of the infected cells. Regulatory T lymphocytes, they will regulate to some extent suppress the immune response. And natural killers are the same as T cytotoxic lymphocytes responsible for elimination of infected or malignant cells. About the B cells, they are responsible for neutralizing of pathogen, responsible for pathogen of phagocytosis, and for complement activation. When we talk about the immunity, we should first of all identify what is it. It's the ability to resist damage from the pathogen and intralocytes like such as cancer cells. Immunity could categorize like innative immunity and adaptative immunity. Uh, these uh, cells, which we discussed previously, T, B lymphocytes, neutrophils, macrophages, they all will take part in production or innative or adaptive immunity. Let us discuss uh, their differences and then 
uh, what cells in which type of immunity are responsible. Innative or non-specific immunity. It's a general non-specific reaction in response to the different kind of antigen. It doesn't matter what kind of antigen is a different kind of antigen, or it's bacteria or it's viruses. It's a it's example of the rapid response. What uh, cells are responsible for this kind of um, immunity? It's plasma cells, it's phagocytes, physical and chemical barrier, which has the components of it. It's like a skin, it could be, uh, it's a physical component, chemical barrier. It could be, for instance, hydrochloric acid in the stomach, a different kind of pH environment in our body. They doesn't develop any kind of memory cells and they doesn't develop allergy reaction. In comparison with adaptive immunity, which is a specific immune response, it means immune response to the specific antigen, to the specific bacteria, or to the specific viruses. This type of immunity requires time, so the reaction will be slower because they need to produce immune cells to the specific uh, uh, antigen, so we need a time. This example of the humoral and cell-mediated immunity components. They're responsible to develop memory cells and they're responsible for development of uh, allergy reaction. So non-specific uh, immunity could be cellular and could be humoral. The example of cellular is an example of the phagocytosis, which mainly will be done by the uh, neutrophils. It, it will be by the uh, microfax, uh, natural killers, and macrofax. And humoral immunity, which will be done by the lysosomes, complement system, and interferons. What cells will take part for innate immunity? It will be neutrophils, uh, phagocytosis of inflammation. It will be monocytes and macrofax, uh, which are also responsible for the phagocytosis. It will be natural killers, which are the part of the T lymphocytes, T division, but they were responsible in, in the level of innate immunity to kill viruses and tumor cells. An example of the mast cells and basophils, which are responsible for to release chemicals that promote inflammation and detect parasites to produce uh, and recruit other immune cells to the site of inflammation. Uh, then, uh, eosinophils, also they're responsible for, for releasing basophils, mast cells, eosinophils, they're responsible for releasing histamine, heparin, which will, which will uh, responsible relatively for vasodilatation, for anticoagulation effect, and as a result to deliver a lot of white blood cells to the, to the area where we have these uh, parasites and or antigens. Adaptive immunity. What cells will take part for adaptive or specific immunity? It will be B cells. Um, B cells, they also a uh, memory B cells. So you see, which could be memory cells, which could remember the specific antigen and infuse it to produce them in a quicker way, not slowly. Memory, cytotoxic T cells, T helpers, and T memory cells. Uh, T cytotoxic T cells responsible for destroying cells, apoptosis of their cells, and T helpers, they will regulate B cells. It means they will the helpers, they're responsible to represent antigen to beta cells or uh, to B cells or T cells. And uh, T cells memory, which provide quick and effective response to an antigen against which or by adaptive immunity, which previously have reacted on it. Chemical uh, uh, descriptions or chemical components. It could be complement system. It could be different kind of cytokines, uh, lipotrients, uh, prostaglandins, which will have the supportive effect for uh, immunity or non-specific or specific. So now let us discuss in the steps how the process of uh, um, first innate or non-specific immunity will be done. So some kind of bacteria or another pathogen will enter the bound. So this bacteria enter the wound. As a result, platelets from the blood will release blood clotting proteins and on the wound side, in this case, to, um, to close this wound. They're responsible to reduce blood, uh, to reduce bleeding. 
Besides this, mast cells will secrete factors that mediate vasodilatation and vasoconstriction. They will be responsible to the river of blood plasma and cells to the area of the uh, to the in in injured area and increase it. So as a result, uh, more white blood cells will deliver to our damage uh, to this area where which have damage and which have this uh, which has these bacteria. Then neutrophils will secrete factors that which that will kill uh, pathogens. Neutrophils and macrophages to, will remove the pathogens by phagocytosis. Macrophages, all besides this, are responsible to secrete cytokines that attract immunity, immune, immune system cells to the site of damage, to the injury site, and activate uh, tissue for uh, involved tissue for repairing. Inflammatory response will continue until the foreign materials will be uh, eliminated through the wound. So in this uh, non-specific uh, immunity will uh, take part neutrophils, uh, macrophages, which are responsible for phagocytosis of uh, uh, pathogen bacteria for elimination it. Mast cells, like supportive cells, they will responsible, they will release histamine, they will release um, uh, which uh, histamine, which is a vasodilatator. So to some extent, uh, blood flow to the injured area will increase and more white, white blood cells will deliver to this area. But besides this, responsible for vasoconstriction, in this case, to decrease the size of the wound and to decrease bleeding. Because nevertheless, if the vessels was also damaged, uh, bleeding could appear. So, tissue injury caused by physical and chemical agents and pathogens. So, it could be some kind of capillary weeding, which will lead to increased blood flow to the uh, damaged area. Increased permeability and as a result, bleed will release into the tissues, become redness of the skin. So, heat, redness, swelling, tenderness, and pain. This is the main um, five points of inflammation, which will happen in a specific kind of area. And here is presented um, why it's happening. So red heat will happen due to the increased blood flow, redness due to the uh, fluid, uh, uh, releasing fluid from the ear to the tissue and swell, swelling also. Tenderness and pain, it's happened due to the extravation of leukocytes to the site of injury and the proliferation of this uh, leukocytes in the place of the injury and due to the immune response which happened here. Specific immune response also will divide into the cellular and humoral. Cellular will be presented by the T lymphocytes, macrophages, and humoral will be presented by the B lymphocytes. So how the um, specific immune response will happen? The foreign agent will from the intracellular pathogens or cell protein within the uh, cytolysis are breaking down into the fragments that are antigens. So it will happen in this, uh, in this, inside, this process will happen inside the cell. Antigens are transported into the roof of endoplasmatic reticulum. Antigens will combine with the main histocompatibility complex uh, class uh, uh, one molecules. The MH1C class antigen complex is transferred to the Golgi organ apparatus, packaged into the vesicles, and transferred to the plasma membrane. Foreign antigens combined with the MHC class one molecules and stimulate producing of the uh, T, uh, T cells cytotoxic. <clears throat> Self antigen combines with the main uh, uh, stability complex one molecules and um, they do not stimulate uh, cytotoxic T cells. And with what happened inside the uh, intracellular antigen processes. Now let us discuss about the extracellular antigen processes. A foreign agent will be digested by uh, 
added to doses and within the vesicles. The antigen uh, is broken down into the fragment from the uh, protest foreign antigens. The vesicles contain uh, the process foreign agents, process from uh, with vesicles produced with the Kolji apparatus. They contain also main histocompatibility complex, but complex two molecules, which will process uh, foreign antigens and um, main histocompatibility complex two. And as a result, they will stimulate, produce, uh, stimulate T helper cells. So generally, the main function of <clears throat> main histocompatibility complex. I'm sorry. One is. <clears throat> In our body, we have two types of main histocompatibility complex. Type uh, one, a class one, and class two molecules. The what uh, as function of this uh, main histocompatibility complex? Main histocompatibility complex type one or class one molecule. They are present in all cells in our body, and to this complex is able to connect only. Uh, this, this complex is able to connect only with the receptor CDA uh, of T cytotoxic uh, uh, lymphocytes. Um, generally, and uh, main histocompatibility complex type two uh, is responsible. Uh, for connection only with the CD4 receptors of the T uh, helpers. So main function of this complex, CD1 or uh, MH, um, main histocompatibility complex one or two, nevertheless, is to detect the peptidide of the uh, pathogen and as a result to present it or to the T helpers through the MA, uh, main histocompatibility complex type two or to the T cytotoxic, uh, T, uh, cytotoxic lymphocytes, which is responsible for phagocytosis. Uh, generally, this main stability complex, it's encoded, uh, encoded the whole proteins in our body. And it's try to detect proteins, your own body from the foreign proteins. And foreign proteins, proteins which comes with bacteria, with the viruses and other antigens. And as a result, these proteins, antigen protein, um, foreign proteins, which is not common for your body, will be presented, as I told, or to the T cytotoxic uh, T cells or to the T helpers. So, and how the process, uh, how happen activation and creation of the T helpers? Dendritic cells or macrophage cells will take uh, the antigen processes and try to display uh, it on the cell surface. The process antigen is bound to the main histocompatibility complex type two molecule, which present the and now this MHC two class. MHC class two molecule is going to present the antigen to the uh, T receptors um, uh, of naive helpers T cells. CD4 attached to the MHC class two molecule and <clears throat> provide uh, const uh, const stimulation of, uh, of the T helpers. The activated T helper cell produce interleukin 2 uh, receptors and secretes interleukin 2, which binds to the interleukin receptors. As a result, uh, interleukin stimulate the helper T cells to divide and differentiate. So they will divide on the memory cells and they will divide on the helper cells. Memory cells responsible for the long lasting immunity and helper cells will release cytokines, which will regulate the immune response, resulting for elimination of the antigen. Now let us discuss how will happen activation and proliferation of the B cells. The antigen, which will bind to the B cell receptor here, uh, 
for some antigens, this provides sufficient stimulation to activation of the B, uh, to activation of the um, beta cells. Most B cells activate re uh, activation requires T helper cells. B cells take in, uh, in antigens by receptors mediated endocytosis and use the main histocompatibility complex class two molecule to present process antigen to the T helpers. So B cells, it means use main histocompatibility complex class two to present this antigen to the T helper. T helper receptors will bind to these uh, main histocompatibility complex with antigen. Uh, antigen and responsible, and as a result, they were responsible to release interleukin 4, which further will affect on activation and proliferation beta cells. B cells will divide it on the plasma cells, its antibodies, which are responsible for elimination of antigen, and B cells memory, which will remember this antigen, and as a result, in the future, they will quickly. Uh, they will be responsible for quick production of the plasma cells to the antigen, to this antigen. Because now they are uh, like, um, because now they know what kind of antigen uh, come to the uh, injured area and how to deal with it. Now let us move on to the platelets. Platelets. The place of region of platelets is a bone marrow. They are available from 200 to 400 multiplying on 9 and 10 division gram per liter. The lifespan is about from 5 to 11 days. The place of destruction, it is the liver, lungs, and spleen. What is the main function? Function of them is the hemostasis. And so according to their structure, they con contain uh, uh, thromboxan A2. They contain vascular growth factors, which further will responsible take part in the process of hemostasis. For instance, thromboxan A2 responsible for aggregation of the platelets. So it's like some kind of cartoon about the uh, platelets, you could see it. Now let us move on to the hemostasis. What is the hemostasis the mechanism? of uh, stoppage of bleeding. We have primary hemostasis, which happened by the vascular platelet, and secondary, which is, com which is done by the coagulation. Primary is common for small vessels, and it requires only platelet plug. And secondary, uh, it's common for the big vessels, and it's required the fibrin clot. So primary. So primary hemostasis, from what stages it consists? Refractory constriction of vessels, platelet adhesion, and aggregation of platelets. So when we have some kind of wound, here yeah, it's happened, yes. Yeah? So platelet adhesion, the first step it's a vessel constriction. Uh, then platelet adhesion occurs when this one platelet adhesion occurs when von Willebrand factor will connect exposed collagen to platelets. So von Willebrand factors to some extent such specific uh, bridge between the collagen elements uh, of the blood vessel and uh, the uh, uh, platelets. So together and as a result it will connect platelets with the damaged vessels and in this case platelet further platelets will make the adhesion near the bond. So without von Willebrand factor, it's very small factor, but nevertheless, without this factor, adhesion of platelets could not happen. Platelet will release um, ADP, will release thromboxan, which will activate other platelets and which is responsible for uh, adhesion and also um, which is responsible for constriction of vessel besides factors. Platelet aggregation, the last stage occurs when fibrogen receptors on activated, uh, will activate it and platelet plug, plug will produce. So mainly this situation will happen in case when we have a small um, uh, vessels and the wound is rather very small. And in this case, it only it requires the platelet plug. We do not need the brain check. In case of the secondary hemostasis, a secondary hemostasis which will happen in the big vessels and require more chain of events. 
So it consists of the five stages. The first stage is formation of prothrombin activators and formation of thrombin. The third one, formation of fibrin. The last one is formation of the clot. The five stage is fibrinolysis, which is related to the damage, which related to um, uh, damage of the clot. In this case, in this case, we will receive require, uh, recovery of the um, damaged area. So uh, the formation of the protein being could happen in the two pathways. It could be the extracing pathways or intrusing pathways. The increasing pathway starts with thromboplastin, which is released outside of the plasma in the damaged tissue. This thromboplastin, uh, uh, in, a in, a in a connection with the factor, the seven factor, will together will make complex thromboplastin factor seven, and as a result, they were responsible for activation of the ten factor, and as a result. Um, uh, the last stage uh, is uh, activation of uh, 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 activation of the ten factor and conversion of protrombin to the thrombin. Besides this, we have interesting pathway which is responsible for production of protrombin activator. It's uh, well, this interesting pathway starts when we have inactivated valve factor, which is in the plasma, and is activated will be coming into connection, into connect uh, contact with the damaged blood vessel. So due to the damaged blood vessel, uh, contact it with the factor 12 will be responsible for its activation. After that, 12 factor is going to activate 9 fact, uh, 11 factor, after that 9 factor. 9 factor in a connection with the 8 factor and calcium ions, don't forget about this, we're responsible for activation of the 10 factor. This is a common pathway. Activation of extracing and interesting pathway result in the production of active 10 factor, which will begin common pathway. 10 factor in combination with the 5 factor and calcium will form protrombinase. The main function of this protrombinase is to convert protrombin to the thrombin. After that, uh, thrombin will be responsible for conversion fibrinogen to fibrin. You could see here. And fibrin is responsible for production of the clot. So, Protrombin activation, it's as this our common pathway. Um, formation of thrombin, it's um, will done by the activation of protrombinase, which will convert protrombin to the thrombin. Fibrin will produce will appear only due to the effect of thrombin on conversion of fibrinogen. And as a result, fibrin will be responsible for production of the uh, fibrin clot. Fibrinolysis, as I told you, this stage will start only in case when the clot will appear. On this fibrin clot, it's like a specific network. Uh, this specific network is going to catch not only platelets, which are responsible for hemostasis, but also red blood cells and white blood cells. So all form elements will be caged in this network of fibrin. And in this case, they will try to heal the wound. So when the wound is going to be healed, uh, we, as a result, vessel will not um, vessel don't need further this clot, and this clot is going to uh, damage. This happened by the uh, process, and this process will be called fibrinolysis. Fibrinolysis starts in a few days after stopping of bleeding, after producing of the clot. This is stimuli, uh, simultaneously repairing process on the damaged vessels area will occur. So what will happen in this fibrinolysis? First of all, we require the inactive protein plasminogen, which uh, due to the tissue plasminogen activator, due to the factor 12, uh, 11, calicreen, will together responsible for conversion plasminogen to plasmin. And now plasmin is, plasmin is going to cut the breed. So, and the process of fibrinolysis will happen. 
So uh, coagulation and anticoagulation system in our blood should be always be equal. Uh, coagulation, the main function of coagulation is to stop bleeding and to produce clot of fibrin clot or platelet plug in case when we have vessel damage. Anticoagulation system, it also has important function. It's responsible for maintaining liquid condition of the blood and also it's responsible for dissolving of the clot. So what factors are related to the anticoagulative system? It's a thrombomodulin, which binds to thrombin and decreases activity of coagulation. It's C protein of the plasma, which inactivate 9, 5, and 9 factors. I'm sorry, it's a mistake. Heparin, which inactivate 12, 9, uh, 10, and 11 factors. And plasmin, which first of all, these low clots, and also inactivate 5, 8, and 12 clotting factors and protrombin. Acid-based balance. Uh, let us go on. And last part of our lecture. Human blood of pH. The normal blood of pH is from 7.35 to 7.45. If the pH will be less than 7.35, we'll talk about the acidic environment in our blood. If the pH will be more than 7.45, we are going to talk about the alkaline environment of the blood. This environment of the blood is very responsible. The pH of the blood is maintained by the buffer system. And now we are going to discuss type of the buffer system. It's bicarbonate buffer system, it's phosphate buffer system, protein buffer system, and hemoglobin buffer system. The main, uh, mostly important uh, pay, um, buffer system for maintaining pH balance is bicarbonate buffer system. Laboratory diagnosis of acid-based disturbance. So normal value of pH is from 7.35 to 7.45. Uh, it's normal value of pH. If the level will be 7 to 7.35, we are going to till 7.45. I'm sorry, it's my mistake. Yes, 35 it should be. We will talk about partly compensate acidosis. If the pH will be more or less than 7.2, we are going to talk about decompensate acidosis. About alkalosis, if the um, pH will be 7.35 and 7.6, it will be partly compensate alkalosis. More than 7.6, it will be decompensate alkalosis. Besides this, when we, to talk, when we talk about pH balance, we also should mention about the party pressure of carbon dioxide. The normal value in the blood, it's uh, venous blood, it's from the 35 to 45 millimeters of mercury. If the value of the uh, partial pressure of carbon dioxide will be more than 45 millimeters of mercury, this condition we will call it like hypercapnia. Mainly, this will be common for acid acidosis, and if pH will be less than 35 and the uh, partial pressure of carbon dioxide will be more than 45. We are going to talk about respiratory acidosis. It means when the carbon dioxide will store in a um, vascular system and it will not be able to exhale. It could have, this situation could happen in case, for instance, when you have person some kind of problems with uh, respiratory disease related to the respiratory system, problems with the breathing. Uh, even you could make by your own respiratory acidosis if you hold the breath for several minutes. For instance, the same CO2 will not be exhaled and you will make in your blood the, uh, respiratory acidosis. If the uh, partial pressure of carbon dioxide will be less than 35 millimeters per mercury, this condition will be called hypocapnia and it will be called respiratory alkalosis. So if you hold the breeze for several minutes, if you could, you will make respiratory acidosis in your blood. But when you will start breathing, you will breathe frequently because you want to inhale more oxygen. And due to this frequently breathing, you will frequently exhale CO2. Due to such frequent breathing type of breathing, when your respiratory rate will increase, normal respiratory rate is about till 16 respiratories per minute, and you will have about uh, 30, for instance, yes? So due to this such frequent breathing, you could make in your blood now respiratory alkalosis. So it's rather easier to go from 
acidosis to alkalosis due to the frequent breathing, deep frequent breathing. Also, when we talk about the acid-base balance, we, not, we should also mention about the level of the bicarbonates. The normal value of it is about 22 to 28 millimoles per liter. If you are going to have, if in a blood analysis, it will be less than 22 millimoles per liter, we will talk about metabolic acidosis. Or if it will be more than 28 millimeters, millimoles per liter, it will be metabolic alkalosis. Okay. Here we have different kinds of acidosis and alkalosis conditions. And uh, when we how uh, and two organs which are responsible to recover or acidosis or, alkali or alkalosis, it's lungs and kidneys. Lungs mainly responsible to recover it by hypoventilation or hyperventilation by exhaling this carbon dioxide. And kidneys renal compensation is mainly responsible for excretion of besides this reabsorption of the bicarbonates. So in case when we have the um, metabolic acidosis disorder, yes? Uh, in this situation, uh, in the blood, you will be able to have low level of pH balance will be decreased. Level of bicarbonates also is going to be decreased and level of hydrogen ions it will increase, become high. It's metabolic condition of metabolic acidosis. Mainly this could happen uh, in case of the um, uh, diarrhea, metabolic acidosis. Then in this situation of metabolic acidosis, your lungs try will, will, uh, will try to compensate this condition by hyp hyperventilation. You see, because in the blood will decrease level of CO2, uh, in this case, to decrease level of CO2. Then, renal compensation will happen due to the uh, excretion of hydrogen ions. So, as we have high level of hydrogen ions, so it's easier to excrete it by the urine. So, uh, excretion of hydrogen ions and reabsorption of the bicarbonates. We have low level of bicarbonates, so it's easier to increase them by reabsorption to the kidney. Common cases, diarrhea, renal failure, um, and as a result, renal failure. Metabolic acidosis, uh, alkalosis, I'm sorry. In this condition, pH will be high. Level of bicarbonates will be high, more than 28 millimoles per liter, but level, level, less amount of hydrogen ions. Metabolic alkalosis, the clinical case, it will be vomiting during the vomiting. Mostly you, the person is going to vomit the uh, um, contains which is in the stomach. In the stomach, we know we have hydrochloric acids, hydrochloric acid. So this hydrogen ions is going to be excreted through the gastrointestinal tract by the vomiting. So we are going to lose hydrogen ions. How your body try to compensate it? Through the lungs, it happens through in case of the hyperventilation to store, to increase level of CO2 in the blood. And uh, renal compensation will happen by excretion of the bicarbonates and uh, uh, reabsorption of the hydrogen ions. Then uh, respiratory acidosis. During the respiratory acidosis, we know, we discussed previously, it should be decreased level of, so during acidosis, pH should be low. Uh, if it is respiratory acidosis, so we are going to gain CO2. So level of CO2, petrofacial carbon dioxide will increase. Besides this, level of bicarbonate also will increase. Respiratory compensation, this will not be ha happened. Mainly in this situation, we're responsible uh, kidneys uh, by uh, renal compensation excretion of uh, hydrogen ions and reabsorption of uh, carbon uh, of, of bicarbonates. Uh, lungs, yes, you will try. In this case, person will try to breathe frequently, but this breathe of frequently will not make such compensation good as uh, uh, kidney. Respiratory alkalosis, when you will lose carbon dioxide due to the frequent breathing, uh, pH will be high, the level of CO2 will be low. The same, lungs will not compensate. So mainly the compensation will be done by the kidney 
kidney will be responsible for reabsorption of hydrogen ions and excretion of bicarbonates. So it's less or more uh, such very brief and um, explanation of the acid beat balance. Thank you for your attention. The lecture is over. Goodbye. Okay.